After some sad news where three prisoners have died and 18 were injured as a result of a fire at the Kotama Sintumule prison. This is up in Louis Trichard in Limpopo. It's understood that these disgruntled prisoners torched the facility after officials had failed to meet their demands to transfer them to prisons that are closer uh, to their homes. An investigation is still ongoing and one person has been charged with arson. But let's talk about uh, the rights of the prisoners in this case and what needs to happen to prevent this happening in future. Prison rights activist uh, Glynis Maraday making time for you this morning. Glynis, good morning to you. We'll talk about the uh, prisoners' demands in just a moment and the rights of prisoners. It should never, ever end like this, but we'll get there in a second. I just want to get your thoughts, apart from what I've just illustrated, what else do you know about this incident? Good morning. Good morning to you, Gareth, and good morning to your listeners. Uh, apart from this incident is the fact that we have three inmates currently, um, as we speak, um, at CMAX. And these three inmates now are being victimized and they are being blamed for the fire. Yet investigation is still on the way and um, no evidence has come forward as yet that these three inmates um, set the fire, set the prison on fire. So um, these prisoners has also reached out again once to me from CMAX to um, seek help, you know, legal representation because they are being victimized as we speak. And um, all the other inmates have been um, distributed across the country to the other facilities. Uh, victimized by, by so, who? How much can you tell me about that, uh, uh, Glynis? Victimized right. by who? All right. Victimized by the members, the prison wardens, um, and this is not ESA Gareth. Mm. One of the inmates, Lester Counts, his mother went to visit him on Saturday, and then he explained to them that, to her, that on arrival himself, Safiso Kumalu and Ronnie Malachi, the three of them, they arrived at CMAX on Thursday. And since then, they have been victimized by being tortured. Um, they're also being shocked for reasons unknown to them. And they are being told by the members, by the prison wardens, that you three are the ones who um, set the prison on fire. Therefore, you will now be under our watch and we will make sure that you are under our feet and, our, uh, and under our hands. So what does that indicate? Mm, uh, it, could this be with the aim um, of uh, getting a false confession out of them? What would the point of this be uh, to your mind? What would the end goal of this be? You see, Gareth, these three, is, um, they are the ones who handed in the memorandum that was written by them. They handed in the memorandum on the 28th of July, crying out for help. They were crying out to the minister to address their issues, the torture, the brutal assault, the sodomy, uh, lack of medical attention. They were crying out and they came to our organization, Exclusive Mediators, and asked if we can assist them to make sure that this memorandum gets sent to the minister, right? They then handed this memorandum in. And since then, they, because they, are the, they were the activists at the prison, um, sp speaking on behalf of the rest of the inmates. So now, due to this, they are now being... Um, tortured and yes as you say they want information they want to know if it is them that set yeah. the prison on fire and it's not them you understand yeah no no i do i understand so any reaction from the minister on this i suppose this is really where someone like you comes into this uh, because i'm sure there's there's many times the minister is asked to to interject but when you're talking about uh, victimization tortured and you went through some great detail horrific detail uh, do you get a sense the correctional services department is dealing with this or are they part of the problem is the minister dealing of or dealing with this or is the minister part of the problem Gareth, I would hope, I really hope that he is dealing with this. And also remember, Kutama was managed by a private company, um, SA Custodial Management, and they don't um, comply with the mandate of Act 111 of 1998. They torture these inmates on a regular basis. Uh, there's an audio recording whereby Sufisu Kumalo explain in detail what the inmates go through. They get segregated, they are being assaulted, 
they not even allowed to open up a case with the South African police services. If they do manage to open up a case with the South African police services, nothing happens with that case. Nobody follows it through. They're not even allowed to give the case number to their family members. Sure. Um, I have also a case, cases that were given to me by the inmates and they have asked me to follow it through for them, which I did, but nothing was done about it. And it's almost as if they are condoning um, sodomy and turning a blind eye to that. And that is a great concern for me, yeah. um, you know, that nothing is being done. It's almost as if the human rights well, no, it's, in fact, it is. Their human rights are being violated. Nobody cares about them. So it, it, it's organizations such as um, exclusive mediators, you know, whereby we step in and we assist these inmates however possibly we can. So that, look, at the end of the day, Gareth, your human rights cannot be violated. Everybody has a right to that in this country. But as I always say, when you do crime, you need to go to prison and pay for that crime you committed. But do not violate people's human rights. So, yes, um, it's because of the memorandum, Gareth, that this mm. all stems from. Uh, I, very, very briefly, I, I, I wanted to talk to you about this memorandum uh, because part of the demands, I understand, if it's the same memorandum you and I are talking about, was to get... Uh, the prisoners closer to their homes. Is, is that correct? Just as briefly, briefly as you can, please. Yes, that's also that's part of it, uh, Gareth. You see, the mandate clearly stipulates that when you are incarcerated, you need to be at a facility closest to your address where you will be released. And these inmates are far from their homes. They don't have family support. So it, it doesn't help with their rehabilitation. So therefore, they were crying out yeah. uh, to be closer to their homes, even if it was a city, you know, not in yeah. their um, home, but even if it was just closer. Yes, that was part of the reasons, Gareth. Thank you. I just wanted to confirm that, of course, Amongst we're going to the follow up. and the brutal uh, assault. Exactly, exactly. I think we've opened up a much bigger can of worms than just a memorandum, Glynis. Thank you. I think this is exactly uh, why we're going to take this story forward. Uh, victimization torture inside the prison, according to prison rights activist Glynis Maraday. Speaking to the prisoners there, we are going to follow up on that. Uh, Glynis, thank you for your time.